In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Today we are celebrating Tuesday of the 17th week of Ordinary Time. As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us remember that every prayer and every Mass begins with repentance. So let's look in our hearts, see where we've gone wrong, and ask the Lord to please forgive us and help us do better. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has a firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest over the great destruction which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people, over her incurable wound. If I walk out into the field, look, those slain by the sword. If I enter the city, look, those consumed by hunger. Even the prophet and the priest forge in a land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion loathsome to you? Why have you stuck, struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail, for a time of healing, but terror comes instead. We recognize, O Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our fathers, that we have sinned against you. For your namesake spurn us not, disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us and break it not. Among the nation's idols, is there any that gives rain? Or can the mere heaven send showers? Is it not you alone, O Lord, O God, to whom we look? You alone have done all these things. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Let the prisoner's sign come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout my life as a Christian, I have been at various times, and quite often, accused of being a religious believer because of fear and weakness. Fear and weakness because, supposedly, I am un unable to face the fact that when we die, that's all there is. And so I am accused of needing religion as a sort of a crutch, you might say. And I'm rather amused by this, not because I'm, I'm strong, I'm very weak, and I've always been willing to acknowledge that. But my devotion to truth is such that I would want to know the truth, even if it was unpleasant. So, therefore, whatever my level of fear and weakness, I would want to know the truth. And if, if I thought the truth was that when we die, that was all there is, I would say that and live that. But it, as it happens, I don't believe that. 
Okay? My belief is that there is something beyond the world we see and the life that we have. And this is basic Christianity, of course. But there's something in today's gospel that allows me to turn that whole thing around on unbelievers. Because although it's not true that I'm a religious believer because of fear or because of weakness, whatever weakness I have, the fact is that a lot of people are probably unbelievers, at least the insincere ones, because of something mentioned in today's gospel. And what it is is Jesus describes the judgment at length. He says the good are collected by the angels and the bad are collected and the bad are burned, basically. So there is, in other words, a judgment. And there are consequences for good behavior and there are consequences for bad behavior. And that is exactly what unbelievers have to deny out of fear. The only way to get out of a judgment at the end of your life is to say that there is no, no afterlife. There's no God. You have to say that because that's the only way to escape the judgment that is coming on their life. And this is a very important thing. Now, the scriptures as a whole, the New Testament in particular, talk a lot more about hell and damnation than they do about heaven. And they go in greater detail about hell than they do about heaven. You can look that up in any concordance. And I believe that most preachers, uh, today at least, are ignoring that fact. You could probably go into every church in America, supposing they still had services today, and you wouldn't hear one word about the gospel, about the coming judgment, about the angels collecting the good people and then separating them from the bad people. And so we are supposed to ignore that and say, well, you know, it's, it's, um, there's only everyone who dies is automatically promoted to a perfumed heaven. Well, the scriptures don't say that, not at all. Why would you believe the scriptures on the one hand that there's a life after this one, but disbelieve them when they say something unpleasant? The fact is we have to accept truth as it is, as a whole. The parts we don't like as well as the parts we do like. That's the only way a rational adult can live, in my opinion. If you take the scriptures seriously, you take them as a package deal. You don't take the parts you like and say, hey, this is true, and all these parts I don't like, well, you can have that. It's like a kid who licks all the frosting off a birthday cake and says, you, you guys can have the rest, what's left. I've taken what I wanted. Doesn't work that way. We know that we're going to be judged for our lives and that there are going to be consequences for that. And we have to acknowledge that. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Let us now bring our needs before the Father, confident in his love and care for us. Dearest Father, we come before you to worship you and adore you and serve you. We begin praying first for the church. We ask you to bless it and strengthen it, even though it cannot be gathered now. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for all those who've been hurt by the coronavirus, and for a quick cure for this. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and its leaders that they may lead us to justice and peace. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who've been good to us, all those who've taken care of us, who showed us the right way, who taught us the right way to live and gave us faith. For, the, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our beloved dead. I'm thinking of my parents and brothers and sisters who have died, and you are probably are thinking of your own beloved dead. We ask the Lord to be good to them wherever they are. So for our beloved dead and all the souls of purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pause for each of you to add your own intentions in the silence of your heart. For each of these important needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father, you've heard our prayers, those we've spoken out loud and those too deep in our heart for words. Dearest Father, grant these prayers if they be first of all to your will and second to our best interests. And we ask these things as we ask all things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we, ha we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. For, by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ.
to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash me from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Prepare then that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and one who was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him, through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and if you're willing to his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Walk them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with each one of you. Let's open our hearts and share the Lord's peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for the Lord's blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you all the days of your life. Amen. Our Mass of this Tuesday of the 17th week of Ordinary Time is ended. But let us go in peace to live the Mass and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.